There are many well-known sports generating a ton of publicity with hours of media coverage creating household names who do very well financially. Then there are those who love the sport discipline so much, often giving up their spare time and weekends for very little reward and sometimes costing them to participate. And then there are those that simply want to try something a bit different. For many, there is the competitive element, but for most, it's not about winning award, it's simply about taking part. At the moment, cheese rolling, mud racing or wife carrying are not yet part of the Olympics, but in the future, who knows? Also, how often do you get to see these events on television? Not that often. In our programme, we will have a look at some of the wackiest, silliest and some absolutely stupid events from around the world. Anyhow, I'm John Paul Gates. And I am Mariana Anton. And I'm Catherine McQueen. And today we will be taking a look at the world of wacky sports. But first, what are wacky sports? Odd events and wacky sports vary a great deal from pure fun events to those requiring a great deal of skill. With events such as snail racing, the only skill is picking the fastest snail which will complete the race in the shortest time. At the other end, there are those events which require pure physical fitness. Moving away from competitive sports, there are events such as the naked bike ride protests, which the only real requirement is to be able to ride a bike and to do it naked or near naked. On many wacky competitive sports events, competitors are very likely to get wet and muddy, even without the help of a fellow runner. One such event is the much copied tough guy races held twice a year near Wolverhampton. One thing that is certain, if you take part in the tough guy race is that you are going to get wet and dirty. But how dirty is dependent on weather conditions. If you want to get really dirty and very wet, then maybe, a better bet is the Malden Mud Race. Yes, I know of the Mud Race. Okay, yes, so tell me I, I, again, I wouldn't do it, but it's um, the, the estuary in Malden, which is thick with mud, and in the middle of winter, I think it's New Year's Day even, I think, um, yeah, a load of people get into the mud and race across the estuary just for fun. Would you get involved in that? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> Sounds like a loads of, lot of fun, you know? Okay. Going to the mud. Yeah, it's, it's fine, because it's something different. And when you do something different, you find sort of excitement in doing something different than not everybody does. So I would find a kind of that excitement as, you know, being different and participating in something kind of unique. Um, I've seen lots of silly sport uh, activities and competitions, but no, I've never, I've never taken part in any so far. Um, but yeah, it sounds like something that I'd like to do. Uh, I'd love to do the, the mud race. That looks really good, but not so sure about the cold showers at the end. Yeah, I would give it a shot, definitely. I'm up for anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you do it? And probably not. Okay, why not? Because I don't feel like crawling through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, it doesn't seem like that much fun to me. I would much rather, like, play, like, a sport where you are, like, not completely soaking wet <laughs> and, like, cold and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, I yeah. think it's like a chance to let let loose, but I also think there's other ways of do, doing that. So yeah. I personally wouldn't wouldn't compete in that. No. The Essex town of Malden is famous for at least two things. Firstly, it is their sea salt, and secondly, the world famous mud race. The town is located about 50 miles or 80 kilometers east of central London, and is where the River Chelmer and Blackwater meet before flowing into the North Sea. The first race took part in 1973 which was more of a bet, but it did attract 20 brave souls. Although several attempts were made to hold another race, it was not until 1994 on Boxing Day that it took place. The race's popularity has grown and now over 300 take part. We go back to the 1994 event. 
I just like the idea, really, of um, wading through the mud. I think it's a bit of a mad idea. A very persuasive friend that said I was going to have a good time and get very muddy and dirty. Yeah. I just enjoy the mud. I just enjoy the mould and mud. <laughs> and I've been to Israel, and they, you know, so the mud's quite you know, therapeutic, apparently, so maybe mould and the same sort of thing, you don't know. <laughs> I, I'm hoping not to get too muddy. I'm hoping to just stay, kick the mud below the knees, hopefully. While the competitors are waiting for the off, why not start some mud throwing? Now many of the competitors are pretty dirty without even leaving the start line. Good fun, they say. The starting pistol goes and the race is off. The early pace seems fast, in fact very fast.